Founders Corner. I'm your host, Dr. Andrew Bills, the apostle and founder of the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Television Network. And today I am extremely excited to bring to you a special guest. And when I say special, I really mean that in the depths of my heart. Um, I want to introduce to some, and uh, some of you already know her. This is Apostle Dr. Carol Dickey. Carol, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. I am so happy to have you on today's uh, segment of Founders Corner. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, you've been a blessing. Uh, your program is called Joyful Journey, and but you've been away for a little while. You, yeah. And you've been through some things. Uh, I'm going to have you just literally take over the show. And um, what is God? Well, first, let's talk about some of the things you've been going through in your life and your testimony. Well, um, this last year has been incredible. I know this last year has been difficult for so many people with the pandemic and so on. But like our lives have literally completely changed in the past year. Uh, last May or the, the end of April of last year, my mother became ill, not from COVID, but um, she was elderly anyway, and she had some uh, difficulties with COPD and so on. But she went into the hospital and uh, we thought it was just going to be an easy fix, but it wasn't. And uh, she passed away. With her mm -hmm. passing away, it was very, very difficult. And I know that this has been that way for so many people because of COVID. You can't visit your loved ones. Uh, we were not able to have a, a, a funeral. Yes. Uh, it was, it's very difficult not to have closure. But at the same time, there was such joy. And that's what I want to focus on is not what I didn't have, but what I did have, because that's mm -hmm. what God's all about. And I had told the Lord uh, many years ago, I've been praying for my mother uh, since I became a Christian, which was over 40 years ago, mm -hmm. that um, please don't take her until she knew the Lord as her savior. Yes. And she was a stubborn woman and it took that long. I mean, the doctors have been saying that she was going to pass away for literally over 10 years. Every year we thought this was the year, but she didn't. And so I had such joy because just a few weeks before she went into the hospital, um, she mm -hmm. did accept the Lord. So how can you be God. Uh, sad, even in the midst of all that's going on, even in the midst of not being able to see your loved one or say goodbye, uh, not being able to have a funeral. Since we're all ministers, there were just three of uh, four of us there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we said some words and we sang and uh, the the funeral director was like crying. It's like <laughs> because the spirit of the Lord was just so there. And it's mm. just sad. Like even the uh, we had no Paul, but we had nothing, nothing. And the gardeners just, you know, brought her uh, her casket down to the burial site. But in the midst of that, I had great joy great joy because I knew she was with Jesus Christ. And that's what God can bring yes. to us, even in the midst of our devastation. So since then, uh, there has been so much upheaval in having to deal with all of her estates and, 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 and um, selling properties and, and so on and so forth. Uh, my brother came to live with us. He's a Christian. We've moved. We had to buy a new home. Uh, we moved out of the area. That's why some haven't seen me. So the last few months have been uh, so full, chock full every day with something. Mm -hmm. And uh, we bought and sold four properties in four months. Mm -hmm. So you can see closing escrows and everything that's going on. But let me tell you, God is so good in the midst of everything, in the midst of everything, Apostle. Yes. Uh, the Lord has been so good. I have felt his presence. He has spoken to me. And I don't know the new direction because I'm hearing a new assignment. I don't know what that means. We don't even have any church. But you know what? I'm on assignment from Jesus Christ. Come on. And I am so excited. <laughs> 
for yeah. what God has planned. Now that we have all of our ducks in a row and uh, we're all settled in, uh, in, in the midst of that, my son had major surgeries. You can't even imagine. We got him into the uh, doctor. He said if he had waited any longer, he might not have lived. Now, this is your son, Christopher, Christopher. who's yes. also uh, been a broadcaster on our network. Yes. Uh, his show has been called Understanding Why. That's right. And it's been impacting the lives of millennials, especially. Yeah, he so had a um, severe. He had a severe. Uh, uh, something happened from a prior dental procedure. And um, it when we got him into the the specialist, the entire bone from his whole side had been eaten away by infection. My Lord. The infection, uh, he said, was at the base of his brain. And had we waited any longer, it would have gone to his brain and would have killed him. So oh. we had to have reconstructive surgery and bone grafts and everything. So that has taken months and months and months. And he's still not done, but he's uh, he's fine. But he, we're still we're still working on that. So in the midst of all that, you can't even believe all the other things. Just the enemy has... Uh, you know, I don't know what to say. I my 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 family on my mother's side is um, Croatian, so it's very close to being Italy, right? It's Italy. Everything's mm -hmm. uh, Italian food, and we have a saying: you know, the spaghetti's okay when you throw it on the wall and it sticks. <laughs> now that sounds dumb, but I feel like the enemy just took a whole spaghetti pot, just threw it, and saw what was going to stick in my life. But you know, God is so good because yes, uh, no weapon yes. formed against me shall prosper. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of it, God has made us prosper. We are uh, we are blessed beyond belief. And so um, I've been on hiatus. I don't know where God's taking me or what he's doing, but uh, you know, I love HSBN and uh, I still have a joyful journey. That's all I gotta say. Well, you know, I want a, the television audience to understand that Carol and I have preached together, traveled together, and I've seen the Holy Spirit in action through her ministry. Um, the, I've seen her lay hands on people, and God has brought healing to their bodies. I've seen the Holy Spirit through her uh, give words of prophecy that have come true in their lives. She is a very anointed, gifted uh, soloist. And I mean, she's, I make her sing one of my favorite songs. <laughs> no, every time we go, I, I know people get tired of hearing it, but oh, I don't yeah. care about what other people think. <laughs> I know it you blesses, don't. <laughs> it, it blesses me. And as far as I'm concerned, when she's singing it, I don't think nobody else is in the church. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it, it brings it brings me healing. Mm -hmm. And so she's an amazing woman. She has an amazing husband. He's a Bible teacher also. The, her son, like I said, Christopher, is one of the teachers on the Holy Spirit Network. And we've been rerunning the shows because yeah. we anticipating his return back. And, uh, but God, this is an anointed house. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this, that I'm giving it back to Carol. Th there's a lot of people who think that if you're a Christian or once you get saved, your life's supposed to be problem free. <laughs> and that's, that's far from the truth. Oh, the my. moment you begin to trust Jesus, the devil puts a bullseye on your back Amen. and he's going to do everything he within his capability to try to distract you, disturb you, break you down, steal faith out of your heart, crush you. But the word of God, Jesus himself told us that uh, if we trust in him, his name is greater than anything else that's been named. And we Amen. have this power because he died on the cross and rose again for our salvation. Amen. And God's grace is greater. Hallelujah. So, Carol, you got me preaching, but I, you're the guest of honor here on this program today. So 
continue and, and, and what has God put in your heart to share with us on today? Well, let me just share a little something. I'm going to look down. Um, I've been in the book of Exodus and the Lord has showed me so much. I mean, I read the Bible through every year, at the entire Bible every year, but I've been saved and been to Bible school and so on. And yet the word is living. So no matter how many times I read it, God shows me something completely different. And I know yes. that it, he's that way with all of you. But something really struck me yesterday. And I want to talk about it because we are in the middle of a pandemic and there is fear all around. OK, yes. people are fearful um, th- and I don't blame them. OK, there's a lot to be afraid of if you do not trust in the Lord, period. Uh, just looking at all that's going on across the country with the weather situation and people not having uh, electricity or a place to stay that's warm. People Mm -hmm. have lost their jobs. I mean, my other son who is a teacher has been out of work well, uh, well over a year now. Uh, What do you do? You know, what, what do you do in the midst of those things? And yet God has been so faithful Uh, I don't think I've ever been as blessed as I have been this past year in the midst of everything going on. And I want to share something with you because I think this is something that we as Christians, uh, we, we do miss. Okay. And it's out of Exodus 16, 15. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes we do not recognize God's provision. Okay. Because in that is when the Israelites have now gone and they're they're in the desert and they're with Moses Mm -hmm. and God has instructed them about the manna that is going to come and uh, to only collect it six days, uh, take a double portion on the seventh day. But Mm -hmm. they were so frightened. um, They didn't listen. They didn't take the portion that God had given them. They tried to hoard some. And then the next morning they woke up and there was maggots in it because God's provision is fresh. It's new every day. Yes. Amen. New every day. But before they they got the um before they started collecting it in Acts, uh, Exodus 16:15 it says the Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. Now we're talking about the manna, the provision of God. They were puzzled when they saw it and they said, "What is it?" They asked each other because they had no idea what it was. And Moses Mm -hmm. told them, it is the food the Lord has given you to eat. This is what I want to say to you. And I I, take it to heart. Sometimes we don't recognize God's provision Mm. because we've never seen it that way. They've never seen manna. So it's like, what is it? Sometimes we don't recognize it. We don't understand it. We don't want that provision. It doesn't look like we thought it was going to look. And Moses says, this is the food the Lord has given you to eat. And I want to encourage you during this pandemic, the Lord is providing for his people. He always does. In the midst of every situation, every famine, there's the widow, there's, there's his people. Despite what's going on, when there was a famine in Egypt, he had already set up Joseph to feed his people. God always has provision for us. That is his promise Mm -hmm. that he will meet all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He wants us to to prosper as our soul prospers. But we as Christians sometimes look at the provision God has given us and it doesn't look like what we think it should look like. It didn't come the way we thought it should come. It didn't come through our job or our, our whatever the, the situation may be, whatever it was. And we look and we say, what is it? And let me tell you one thing. God's provision is sure. OK, it's sure that manna didn't stop flowing for 40 years. OK, let me encourage you. Do not be fearful. Fear is a spirit because God says he's not given us a spirit of fear, yes. but a power of love and of sound mind. So that's a spirit. When you feel that fear coming on you, you need to say back up, back up in Jesus name. You need to tell the devil where he can go because God is your source, not the government, not uh, the stimulus relief that may or may never ever pass in government. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you one thing I've learned these last few months is the government is messed up. Okay. I'm sorry. It is. They can't agree on anything. 
If you think they're going to rush in and, and save you and solve your problems, you are mistaken. Jesus is the only one who can solve your problems. Yes. And hallelujah. That's all I got to say is that you may look and you may say, what is it? What is it? And I'm going to tell you right now, it is the provision of the Lord, whether you recognize it or not. So in the midst of this pandemic, let me just give a, a testimony. I haven't shared this. I haven't, I haven't shared this with maybe just one or two close friends, but um, we, we lived on very little before the pandemic came. And I had told the Lord uh, we were running out of money. And if you think you get into the ministry uh, for money, you are seriously and sadly mistaken. Okay. Yeah, that's right. uh, most of the time we, we never got paid and the Lord said, you know what, Carol, uh, don't worry about it because I'm your source, not this mm -hmm. church, not anything. I'm your source. So the Lord was always my source. And I told the Lord, uh, at the end of last year, I said, Lord, should we sell our house just so we could live off of that money? Because we, that was it. And the Lord said, no, nope, I don't want you to do anything to the spring. And I told my husband and the Lord said the same thing to the, my husband. And I didn't know what was going to happen. And then my mom passed away. And um, my life changed in an instant, in an instant. And uh, we were able to sell her home, which uh, was in complete disrepair, but it was in Hollywood, so uh, which is where I'm from, as you can tell right now. Uh, we sold her home in Hollywood. We had all kinds of uh, movie stars uh, bidding on it and so on, even though it was completely in disrepair, but they, I guess they wanted to refurbish it. Do you know God in his provision gave us so much more than we had hoped or asked for that when it was all said and done, I was able to buy my new home cash. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Praise God. One moment, I didn't know how I was going to live. And I had preached a sermon that January where when there was a famine. Remember, there was a famine. There was a siege in Samaria. And they said, tomorrow, God is going to do something. Today, you're eating just off of, basically, you're eating your children. Tomorrow, I'm going to do something so big. And even the people at the wall, the guards would say, I don't even believe that. Do you know what happened in that guard? He got trampled when the people ran out to get their stuff. Did you know that they had some uh, some beggars come back in and say, hey, guess what? God scrambled all of our enemies and now all of their stuff is there. Go get your stuff. The, mm -hmm. the Israelites ran out. They trampled that man who did not believe the Lord. He didn't get his portion. They came back even when they left Israel. Remember what it says? It says, go. Go in to ask all the, uh, the Egyptians for their stuff. Because when you leave Egypt, when you leave Egypt, you're taking the stuff with you. And that's how I feel. Can you imagine one day? I don't know how Jesus. we're going to do anything. And the next day, I got a house in California paid for. Okay? That's the Lord. In Amen. the middle of a pandemic, we don't have any income, nothing. And the Lord was able to do that. Now, I'm not saying this to boast. Because I have nothing to boast on except Jesus Christ. But the Lord told me he would always be my source. He told me that he would always provide for us. He is a faithful father. He is faithful. He is so faithful. And I'm telling you right now, that is the God that I serve. So when you look at God's provision, I don't think I would ever have said, okay, what's going to happen? I, it, it never would have occurred to me. I would probably say, what is this? Like they looked at the man and said, what is this? And Moses said, it is the provision of the Lord. And in a moment, my life changed. And I, uh, I mean, it changed. It went upside down, upside down. And yet God has never spoken to me as much as he has. I'm telling you, you, you know, when life gives you lemon, uh, lemons, make lemonade. If you're sequestered and we're sequestered, pray. Pray, uh, worship, take this time as a, a time set apart to the Lord. Don't look at what the world says. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. I tell you what you can do. You can spend time with Jesus and you yes. get on your face.
face and you spend that time with Jesus. And let me yes. tell you, Jesus will talk to you. He speaks to me every day. I pray for people all over and God is doing things. He's, t I mean, I'm telling, I can't, there is, uh, this is only a 30 minute show. I cannot tell you, I cannot tell you the joy that I have. Talk about, you know, I just got uh, my license plate. Everything is, is just, uh, up in the air, right? So they they can't. I can't go pick up my new license plate. But my new license plate says "Joyful One." I'm a joyful one because I know in whom I have believed. I know, despite what you see, you mm -hmm. need to hold on. You need to just trust the Lord. You need to say, Lord, I'm going to be blessed in the midst of this famine. I'm going to be blessed, and I'm going to take the riches of Egypt with me. Hallelujah! Okay, I'm yes. sorry. I get so excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all right. This is beautiful to me because that's the, the Lord of the Bible. That's the Amen. God that we serve. We are not to walk around like we've been dipped in lemon juice. Amen. And when, like, like Carol said, if life deals you lemons, make lemonade out of it. In other <laughs> words, bring on the praise and watch the hand of God. Amen. Move. And let me, can Be I just... Oh, I'm so go sorry. Ahead, I didn't go mean to ahead. I just want to say one thing. What's so funny is uh, we tried to even get a loan on our house, uh, the old one, just to live off of. But they wouldn't give me a loan because we had no income. And I just think that's hysterical because we had no income. And that's why I had to buy a house cash because we have no income. But <laughs> it doesn't matter what the bank says. We mm -hmm. have no income, and yet the Lord bought me a house cash. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes. This it, And my house is twice as big as my old house. We lived in a house with one bathroom, and all of us for 30 years. It was so small. It was so small. And then my brother had to come live with us on the couch for several months. It was so small. But I was thankful because some people live in a hut. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. But now... Do, look, look at God. They wouldn't even give me a loan on a house that I had plenty of equity on. Mm -hmm. They said no, but God said yes. Bishop. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, go ahead. I'm yes. sorry. I just get excited. <laughs> well, you know, David said, I once was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. Amen. God's grace is so amazing, so wonderful, so glorious. Where the problem is, is when people begin to look at their problem and allow the devil to begin to speak to their mind and the devil tell you, you can't do this. God doesn't love you. You're not smart enough. You're not young enough. You're, you're not rich enough. You, you don't have the talent, you, you can't sing, but listen, you can do anything through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And he's raising up people that will just surrender their hearts to him. And he will, is looking for someone to do amazing things through. Well, Carol, our time is almost up. We have a little about uh, four minutes exactly to go. I want you to pray for the people in our listening audience right now. Will you do that, please? Amen. Lord, I just thank you for those who are watching right now, Lord God. And I don't know what they're going through. I don't know what struggles. I don't know what health concerns. I don't know, but I know one thing, that you are our God and you are our deliverer, period. And Father, I pray for those who are sick right now in body, that you would just touch them, that you would heal them, Lord, that you would raise them up in this hour to praise your holy name, Lord God, that you would meet all of their needs according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus, yes. that those who are without jobs, Lord God, or without income, Father, that you would open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing that they can't even contain, oh God. Yes. Lord, yes. I pray for every need to be yes. met, yes. every need to be answered. I pray, oh God, for just a series, Lord God, a series, Lord, of testimonies that will come forth. Lord, some of us were holding on for so long, so long, but that word where you cast your bread upon the water and after many days it will come back. Lord, it is true. We cannot outgive God. Lord, you are not a God that you would lie. You are not, I mean, you are not a man that you should lie, Father. And you have said that when we, when we sow our seeds, Lord God, we will reap. 
We will reap our, our reward, Father. And I just thank you, God. I thank you that you are faithful. Your mercies are new every morning. You are a God of faithfulness, even when we are not faithful, Lord God. So I pray, yes. oh God, you encourage your people this morning. Lord, if I could say anything to them, I just pray for encouragement in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Lord, give them encouragement. Some people, Lord God, want to give up. Some people just want to say that's enough. But Lord, no, Lord, let this be a turnaround time in their life in the name of Jesus. Let it be a rain of words, a moment in time where God, when they said that was the moment where just my faith grew from a mustard yes. seed into something where that mountain is just moved from their life in the right. name of Jesus. Lord. Yes. Set them free from every spirit of fear. We bind you, spirit Jesus. of fear. You have no power here. Yes. I say go uh -huh. in Jesus' name. And yes. Father, bring instead a, just a spirit of peace, a peace that passes all understanding, oh God. You say Damn. you give peace to those whose mind is stayed on you, oh God. Help us to keep our minds Jesus. stayed on you. Help us to keep our eyes focused on you, Lord God. And help us to remember who we serve, yes. Lord, because we don't serve <laughs> this world. We don't serve politicians. We don't serve anybody except Jesus Christ. And Father, yes. we thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for the provision. Even if we say, yes. what is it? And we don't recognize it. I pray every single person right now would recognize the provision. And thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you, Father. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, Apostle Dr. Carol Dickey, we love you very much. Thank <laughs> you for blessing our television audience. You've been listening to The Founder's Corner with uh, our guest. And if you want to hear more from her, turn on, tune in to her program, Joyful Journey. I guarantee you, you will be continuously blessed and encouraged. Will you call up someone? Will you hit that share button? Tell others that this program is on the air. Tell others to look up a Carol's program, Joyful Journey. You can find us on Facebook beside the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Television Network or CWWN, which is the Christian Women's Word Network. We're on 24, 25 other platforms all over the globe. You won't have any problem if you try just to find us. Well, my friends, we want to thank you for tuning in. And until the next time, remember, Jesus does love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.